Lesson 30 is a geometry lesson. This is Algebra 2. All right, so in lieu of 30, we're talking about inverse relations and inverse functions. An inverse function reflects a graph across the y equals x line. Literally, if I have coordinate points, inverse functions, they swap the x's and the y's. So instead of 1, 2, I have 2, 1. This is the inverse. Instead of 5, negative 6, I have negative 6, 5. This is the inverse. And I've graphed them, the first two. This is the first one, this is the inverse. See, it's reflected across that line. So we can reflect points, but we can, and, and that would be the inverse. Or, ladies and gentlemen, we can look at inverse functions. So a relation just gives me coordinate points. We're only gonna look at linear functions. Well, you'll have some other ones, but, but we'll work them. All right, so what if I have y equals two x minus five? Let's graph that one. We start at negative five and my slope is two. So I rise two as I run one. I'm gonna erase these other points so, I, so as to not confuse them. Rise two, run one. All right, so this is the line. About, yes, yes. So if we were to invert it, would we go negative five over one x? Okay, what did we do with the coordinate points? We just swapped them. Okay, y'all look. We swap the x and the y. That's what we're gonna do. What? What did I do? Where y is, I put x. Where x is, I put y. Now I'm gonna solve this for y. Multiply by x on both sides. You see what I just did, right? So now you get that many. So now I'm gonna add five. Well, you're still solving for y, so y. Because I want it in this form. I want it in slope-intercept form but didn't you already to graph it. First, no, this inverse. was the original. This is the inverse. the inverse. Got it? Okay. All right, so then I have x plus five equals two y. I divide every term by two. So, one half x so y equals one half x plus five halves. Got it? So we're gonna graph this. So we begin at five halves, which is two and a half, about here, right? We're gonna rise one as we run two. So we're gonna rise one as we run two. Maybe a little lower. Rise one uh, as we run two. So they're probably gonna intersect here. If I continued this line on, Let's just see it. Well, that's kind of it. And then this one looks sort of like this. All right, so you see the reflection across this line such that like the point over here is reflected over here. Inverses. Um, we use a lot in pre-calculus and calculus. So before you hear it in calculus, in pre-calculus the first time, I like for you to hear it here. All right, if you'll look at your homework. Um, you do not have to work any on the bottom, verifying inverses. We will do that the latter part of the year. 
you'll only work the top half, but you'll also work the back. 25, 27, and 28. So you just cross out bear time? Yeah, the numbers are listed on the top of the page. Do you see? Oh, I see that. Okay. But I would like to work number 28 together. All right, we're going to work some more like this, but I wanted to work a graphing one with you. Um, we will. All right, so I think this one has a point there and a point at 4, 2. Such that it looks like this. I believe this function is f of x is the square root of x. That's what I think it is. I know that that's what the function looks like, drawn. Or y, you know, f of x, that whole term, is the same thing as y. y is the square root of x. I believe that's what that, this image is. All right, so 0, 0 doesn't change, right? 1, 1 doesn't change, does it? What happens to 2, 4? It becomes 4, 2. So, so what did I do? On this image, I found some points. Can you see the very faded lines? That's what I did, I found points. One one looked like a point, and four two looked like a point. I know it's a curve, and I, I know it probably looks like this. So this would be the inverse. What did I do? I just found a couple of points, right? And I swapped their x's and y's. So for example, on number 25, do you see a point? Yes. What's one point, Caroline? Uh, negative one, one, or negative one, zero. Negative one, zero is a point. So negative one, zero would become? Zero, one. Zero, negative one. Zero, negative one. Do you see another point? Luke, you see another point on number 25. Look at, look at the parabola. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three would become what, Luke? Three, two. Right, so you're gonna take points that are obvious on the curve and you're gonna flop, flop, swap the X. I know that was horrible. Swap the X and the Y's, yes. Negative two, three. Negative two, three becomes? Three, negative two. Three, negative two. All right, so y'all complete number 25. And let me see what your graph looks like. Wait, is this, is this wrong? Oh, well, zero, yeah. negative one. Yeah, look at your points. All right. Let's do talk about 25. What are the points that we have on 25? Let's do the original. Here's the original point and what we're going to graph on the inverse. On the original, we have... Zero, negative one. So it becomes one, negative, negative one, one zero. zero. Plot that point. Plot negative one, zero. Okay, another point we said was negative two, three. What does negative two, three become? Three, negative two. 
We have <clears throat> negative one, zero. What does it become? Zero, negative one. Zero, negative one. Look at that. Two of the points, actually, are also in the original equation, graph. Then we have one, zero. It becomes zero, one. <clears throat> then we have two, three. It becomes three, two. Graph those and make the curve. Let me see your curve. <clears throat> yes, that is correct, David. Yes. Yes. Yes? Could you come help me with this? I would love to. Let me see your curve. Okay, so. Uh -uh. You're plotting the points. Negative one, zero. There's a point. Three. Three. Negative two. There's a point. See? That's the second one. Zero. Negative one. Zero. One. Wait. Two. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see your images. Okay, zero. Okay, that's negative one, zero. The next one is three. There we go. You have that one. Zero, negative one. Then zero one, that's zero one. Here's your other. That's not zero one. Zero one is to the green. We've gone up a little bit. Make sense? That's correct. Look, can you show it to me? Yours. Very good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's look on the front of this sheet and let's work some of these uh, between 3 and 18. And then I'll let you do some on your own. Let's work number four. Number four, the original is y equals negative 5x minus 7. I want the inverse relation, the inverse function. So what do I write? X equals negative five Y minus seven. And then what do I do? Then you add seven and divide by five. So I'm solving for Y. That's exactly right. I'm going to add seven to both sides. So I end up with X plus seven is negative five Y. Then I divide every term by negative five. We just write them in separate. Y equals negative one fifth x minus seven fifths. Can we, yes, you can. Right? Just the yes. Complete yes. This is the inverse. So that's the solution. To these problems. This is the solution. It is kind of easy, isn't it, Paul? Paul, speak too soon. What? Shut up. Yeah. 
say the thing. Huh? Rudimentary, my dear. <clears throat> it is kind of easy. But it's going to be hard to Landry, but this it's not next year yet. Okay, let's do number eleven. Next year's gonna be rough. Let's work number eleven. Yes. <laughs> of course you According to Haley, I, I know his be. mother. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh. I know all your moms. Okay. What do I do? Whoa. Which X and Y? Okay. But it has to be, yeah, square root and then times. It has to be Y squared. <laughs> what, what number is this? This 11. is... 11. 11. 11. Okay. So now I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. Divided by y. No. Oh, really? Oh. <clears throat> so I have x minus 5 equals y squared. Isn't it square root of x, x minus, y? minus 5 square? The square of x minus 5? No. Wait. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. <clears throat> this is plus and minus. So y equals plus and minus square root of x minus 5. Why do you have the plus and minus? Well, because you don't know what it's going to be. Okay. What if I have y squared equals 4? What if x minus 5 is the value 4? Or negative 2. So what could the value of y be? Can it be 2? Positive 2? Yes. Because positive 2 squared is? 4. Can the value for y be negative 2? Yes. Yes, because negative 2 squared, that's why it's plus and minus. Are we good? All right. Let's do number 16. Yeah, Paul, I think Whoa. we spoke too soon. Why? Wait, we have two points? Look at the problem. It's like... Yeah, 16. Oh, that's easy. Oh. Y equals the square root of X plus 5. What do I do? X equals the square root of Y plus 5. How do I get rid of square root? Square it. Square it. <laughs> Got to square both sides. So then we have x equal x squared, rather, equals y plus 5. What is that square minus? Wait, why aren't we making it y plus 25? Because square root of 5 plus no. square root of 5 no. times square root of 5. Everybody look. Everybody look. Look what this is. This is the same thing as the square root of y plus 5 times the square root of y plus 5, plus 5. What's any radical times itself? Just What's number. under the radical? Got it? That's why it's only y plus 5. So now you subtract 5 from both sides. y equals x squared minus 5. Final answer. <laughs> Okay, let's do 17. Oh. Y equals the square root of X plus eight. Eight is not under the radical. What do I do? Square X. Swap equals. my X's and my Y's. X equals square, square root, root of Y plus eight. plus eight. Then what do I do? Square root of the answer. No, I isolate my y. I move the 8 to the other side first. So I subtract 8 on both sides. Now I square both sides in their entirety. So this ends up being y equals x minus 8 times x minus 8. 
What's x minus 8 times x minus 8? x squared. That's an x. x squared. Minus 8x. Minus 8x and? And 64. No. Minus 8x. Minus 8 more x. So minus 16x. Minus 16x plus 64, 64. 64 equals y. Wow. Final answer. That's a pain. That's a blessing. <laughs> I don't understand why we have a 16. Okay, because x minus 8 times x minus 8. Look, we do the first, that's x squared. We do the outers, that's minus 8x. We do the inners, that's minus 8x. And the last, plus 64. You can combine like terms. You can combine your outers and your inners when you have these types of factors, linear factors. Can we do 18? Let's do 18. You do 18. Mm -hmm. 